Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Karis Diamond and it is time to brawl and it's also time for me to give my 100% honest review of the most recent update. And this update was massive. As always, I'm going to be 100% honest with the things that I loved as well as the things that I'm not really a fan of. And yes, there were some things that I did not love in this update. We're going to review things in no particular order, but at the end of the video, I'm going to rate this update as a whole on a scale from 1 being the worst update in Brawl Stars, to 10 being the best update in the history of Brawl Stars. And the answer just might surprise you. But you know what else might surprise you? How awesome today's video sponsor is. I wanted to give a huge thank you to Frag Pro Shooter for sponsoring this video. If you haven't tried Frag, you are seriously missing out. Frag Pro Shooter is a third person shooter game specifically designed for mobile devices and it is a ton of fun. You create a team of five heroes and while you only control one at a time, you can actually switch between your heroes whenever you want. The goal is to protect your your base while you destroy the enemy base and every kill that you get brings your team closer to victory. That's basic frag pro shooter for you guys but it gets even better than that. Frag recently launched a 2v2 mode where you can play with a friend against other players. You and your friend or a random teammate choose three characters each and work together to take out the enemy players. And by downloading frag pro shooter with my link you'll get one golden chest, 500 coins and six dollars worth of diamonds for free. Frag pro shooter has over 70 characters that have a bunch of different types of abilities. Dr. Crow can switch from poisoning enemies to healing teammates on command. Jet launches into the air where she can attack enemies from the skies. DJ Equalizer literally makes enemies dance so that they become easy targets. And Lollipop drops a jelly that makes you jump really high. Seriously though guys, if you have not tried this game out yet, you should really try it out because it's a ton of fun. By the way guys, thank you for watching those sponsored ads. They support my channel equal to the power of code Kairos, which I almost forgot. K-A-I-R-O-S, code Kairos in the Brawl Stars shop. Supporting a continual dose of cringe like this with every gem spent in Brawl Stars. Okay guys, let's talk about the changes to the free to play progression and then we'll talk about Brawl Pass. When Brawl Stars mentioned that they were going to be adding Brawl Pass to the game, I never would have imagined that they would buff the progression of everyone, including free to play players, by well over 20%. And by well over 20%, I mean way more. After I calculated the difference from before the update and progression and after the update, Supercell actually went and added more quests to further improve progression. That is crazy. I remember back when Brawl Stars did a, an announcement saying that they were going to be releasing a Brawl Pass with like just a picture and everybody in the comment section was talking about how terrible it was going to be because free to play lives matter. And you're right. They do. If you ask me, Brawl Stars would not be as successful as it is today if they did not make the free-to-play player base happy. But the thing is, this isn't the first time Brawl Stars completely changed the progression system on us. No, they did all sorts of changes way back in beta, and every single time, they actually made it easier for free-to-play players to progress. So this time, I actually wasn't worried about them making things harder on free-to-play players, but I thought that they were going to be giving free-to-play players a small buff like 5% at the most, right? Over 20%? Are you crazy? That is awesome. Now, if you are curious to know exactly how much it was buffed for, stay tuned for a future video where I'm gonna be doing all of the math, and I'm actually gonna tell you how long it will take for a free-to-play player to completely max out their account, and then I'm gonna compare it to how long it would take for a Brawl Pass player to max out their account. Obviously, I think increasing the rewards for free-to-play players is really amazing. Before the update, Supercell was releasing brawlers fast enough that it was kind of getting close to impossible for free-to-play players to ever max out their accounts, because as soon as they would get close, boom, a new brawler's out, and all of a sudden they have to progress even further, which we all want more brawlers, right? I definitely do, but you guys get the problem, the, the issue that was going on with that. Now, I still haven't done the math to find out if it is now possible for free-to-play players to progress faster than Supercell's releasing new brawlers, but I am pretty confident based off of my estimates that it is, which is really awesome. Obviously, I'm gonna let you guys know that in a future video. Okay, guys, now let's talk about the things that I love about the Brawl Pass, and then we'll talk about something that I do not like about the Brawl Pass. The Brawl Pass offers crazy value no matter how you look at it. Even if you ignore the 11 pins, the chromatic brawler, and the exclusive skin, and only look at overall progress, the Brawl Pass is a no-brainer. Before the update, the best consistent way to spend gems was to buy token doublers to double your progression all the time. After the update, the best consistent way for you to spend gems is to buy the Brawl Pass. It offers 4.7 times more value than buying token doublers before the update. And once again, you're also getting an early brawler, 11 pins, and an exclusive skin on top of that. That is a huge boost of progression to anyone who is willing to buy the pass. And that is a massive buff to light and medium spenders. I love that and I absolutely think that this was the right direction for Supercell. They could have done the Brawl Pass very wrong, right? They could have created a pass that wasn't hardly worth it at all, which would mean that less people would buy it and it actually wouldn't be much of a benefit.
benefit. And then there's also the opposite issue of putting so much value into the Brawl Pass that there would then become a divide between the free-to-play players and spenders, making it impossible for free-to-play players to compete against spenders. Luckily, you can still win in Brawl Stars with skill, even if you're facing someone with higher level brawlers. But still, that is why the ability to buy the pass with gems, rather than requiring an actual purchase, makes the Brawl Pass so awesome, right? The pass now has 90 gems on the free side of it, which means that free-to-play players who are patient enough to save those gems will be able to buy every other pass without actually having to spend real money on the game. Obviously, because of the Brawl Pass, they're going to be missing out on the skins that can only be purchased with gems, but they'll get an exclusive skin in the Brawl Pass that's absolutely worth 150 gems, plus 11 pins, the newest brawler, and way more progression, right? Honestly, I don't think that the developers could have done a better job at creating a Brawl Pass than this. Serious props to them because there is a lot of ways that they could have screwed this up, and instead they made something that makes everyone feel like a winner, and I love that. But there is something that I really do not like about the Brawl Pass, and I'm going to talk about that, and then after that we'll talk about pins. And that is the fact that you can't unlock one thing on the Brawl Pass, or even on the Free Pass, without also unlocking the rewards leading up to it. I know that most of you guys watching right now are not in this situation, but I know that there are some of you who are, and for those of you guys, this is absolutely an issue that needs to be addressed. If you have a maxed out account, it is useless to open up Brawl Boxes on either the Free Side or the Brawl Pass, because every time that you do, you get more useless gold. And you also miss out on saving boxes for the future when rare brawlers unlock and you want to be able to unlock them quickly. Now, as it is right now, I can't go and unlock those free gems on the bottom half of the pass unless I'm willing to waste days worth of progress. And on the Brawl Pass side, if I want to unlock the exclusive skin clear at the end of the pass, I have to waste the entire pass worth of progression. Yes, this skin should probably cost 150 gems by itself, and yes, I'm getting 11 pins on top of that, as well as a new brawler, but that does not take away from the feeling of disappointment with wasting progress. And that's what it is. It feels like a waste, and that's not good. Especially because that feeling of disappointment taints my experience with the Brawl Pass every single time I want to unlock something later on in the pass. Now, if I was patient, I could just not open anything on the Brawl Pass and then wait until the next brawler is released to try and get it in a box or even use those boxes to be able to level that brawler up. Or I could even wait until the next pass is out because we're going to be able to claim rewards from previous passes. But you should not have to wait longer to unlock something that you have earned just because you've played the game longer than other people or more actively than other people or because you've spent more money on the game to help develop it. It really feels like you're being punished for having supported the game longer or with more money. That's really disappointing. Supercell either needs to make it so that you can pick and choose rewards no matter where they are on the pass, or they need to add something into the game that will allow for long-time supporters to spend their gold, which honestly, I just feel like they should do both of those things. Because guess what? Gemmers just got a massive buff to progression as well, which means more useless gold with every single season. Honestly, I would just be happy if I could just buy pins for like some ridiculous amount of gold. Like if I could spend 5,000 gold on a pin pack to save me 50 gems, Obviously, that's not worth it for anybody unless your account is maxed out, but it would be beneficial to me and it would make me feel like my gold isn't a waste. Or maybe like 10,000 gold so I can spend it on an 80 gem skin. Or 15,000 for 150 gem skin. Like, I, I know these are crazy amounts right here for most of you guys, but you get the idea. I have 100,000 gold sitting on my account and there's nothing to do with it. Brawl Stars needs some type of a mechanic that is obviously a gold sink, but that would make excess gold feel like it actually had a use and served a purpose. Okay, now let's talk about pins and then we're going to talk about quests. I've talked in the past a lot about how an issue with Brawl Stars is a lack of content for heavy spenders, people who are willing to spend hundreds of dollars on the game, right? I know that does not sound like a problem for most of you guys, but if you compare Clash Royale or Clash of Clans to Brawl Stars, you'll see why Brawl Stars is absolutely missing out because you can spend a lot of money on those games. If you ask me, that's where pins come in. Obviously, pins don't offer very much value right now because they can only be used in chat. And I don't know about you guys, but I spend most of my time playing with randoms because I want to have a good feel for what you guys are going through. I don't know why I'm still doing that. I obviously know the pain very well. So pins are basically just like a collector's item for me for the time being. But when they do become available as emotes and you can use them mid-match, I am going to love having pins, right? And pins are absolutely great for heavy spenders. At 50 gems for a pack of three pins and a minimum of seven seven pins for each brawler, we're talking about over $200 worth of pins being added to the game. Oh, also, I forgot to mention that Supercell did include a base pin for all of the brawlers for you guys to get which when you unlock them, which I love. You get that for free. That's super awesome, right? Especially because they weren't originally going to be doing that and giving
giving people pins for free. Now, obviously, most people aren't going to be trying to buy every single pin in the game like I am, but that is a lot of extra content to buy for heavy spenders, and that is a good thing. I except not even I can just spend a couple hundred dollars on pins. Pins are only going to show up in the shop every now and then, which I personally find incredibly disappointing. I would love it if I could do a video spending $200 and unlock every pin in the game. Not only so that I could have the pins, but obviously because I would then make the money back off of that and you guys would enjoy the content. You'd be able to see every single pin in the game. That's awesome. I obviously want to show you guys every single pin and rank them all on a tier list because that's what I like to do. <laughs> so that's really disappointing and I wish that Brawl Stars would make some way for me to be able to buy the pins whenever I wanted to or be able to just unlock them right from the start, right? Now let's talk about them actually being used as emotes in battle. I don't have any information on when emotes are going to be available in battle, but I'm definitely going to let you guys know. It's probably going to be in the next update, which is going to be happening in June. I guess there's a chance that Brawl Stars might actually do it beforehand, but I would be surprised if they did that. It seems like something that they would need to be able to do an actual update rather than a server-side update for. With that said, though, I do have some opinions on emotes. What? The joke's not funny twice, guys? Okay. I guess I'll put a pin in that one. <laughs> if there is not going to be a way to permanently mute emotes, I'm going to be upset. If there is not a way to be able to mute and unmute emotes in the middle of battle, I'm going to be upset with that. If people are going to be able to repeatedly spam emotes without any kind of cooldown timer, I'm going to be upset. But if we can permanently mute emotes right from the start, we can unmute and mute them mid battle and people won't be able to spam them, then I am super excited for emotes being added into battle. I can't wait to have more ways to communicate with others in the middle of battle, right? It's a social game. I mean, come on. I'm, I'm stoked for that. Now let's talk about quests and then we'll talk about Gale. I think my favorite thing about quests is that they encourage you to play a variety of brawlers and also a variety of modes. I'm not sure about you guys, but I absolutely got into the habit of only pushing my favorite brawlers and only playing each mode to get the star token before switching to my favorite modes. Obviously, I did some grinding to get, you know, each brawler to a certain trophy mark so that I could earn the star points. But after that, it was just like, I'm going to play Crow and Showdown because he's fun. Now, even only after a few days of playing quests, I find them making me want to play the game more and more, which I think is an absolute plus. That is fantastic. It's like a checklist of things that I feel like I need to do before I stop playing, but I get rewarded for doing each one. And that is so fun. I also thought it was really clever for Supercell to add a quest logo on brawlers and modes where you have quests available. My only improvement that I would want for quests is to make it so that there was a quest button right on the homepage so I didn't have to click on the brawl pass and then go to quests in order to see them. Other than that, I love quests and I'm really impressed with the variety and types of quests that Supercell came up with. Okay guys, now we're going to talk about Gale and then we're going to move on to a rapid fire session on all of my thoughts on everything else. When it comes to Gale's artwork and personality, I think that he is a fantastic addition to the Brawl Stars universe and I kind of like that he's a little sweet and kind rather than like a grumpy old man, right? I also love that he has very unique mechanics that we do not currently have in the game. Now, I did want to add a little bit of a disclaimer here. At the point of me recording this video, I've only played Gale in low trophies, and so my opinion is probably going to change. With that said, though, I do think that his main attack is pretty underwhelming, okay? And without his gadget or his star power, he feels pretty weak which is kind of funny considering the fact that Supercell actually gave him multiple buffs before he was even released. He was so bad before that, guys. He was so bad. But I will say this. His gadget is straight up insane. The fact that he can put down a gadget at the beginning of every 3v3 mode aside from Brawl Ball and get a permanent way for him and his teammates to recover from death faster is crazy. Now, I have not played it in competitively yet, so there's a good chance that I'm going to be wrong when I say this, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if Supercell found some sort of way to nerf his gadget in the future. I don't know what that would be, maybe making it so it only works for a certain period of time or a certain number of uses or something like that, but it's really strong in the right mode right now, and it's also really hilarious. On top of that, I also really like his star power that stuns people who get blown into a wall. With the right team plays, that can be incredibly useful, but it does typically require a, a team play in order to make it work out because Gale's knockback ends up pushing him further away from his target, so he can't actually hit them when they're stunned, so that's a little weird. I actually kind of find that pretty annoying when playing Gale. He's already pushing an enemy back, why does he also have to get blown up further away, right? It's kind of like Frank's wind up with his abilities. It's a weakness, but when it works out, it's a strength to him in, in a way, I guess. Also, we haven't played with his second star power, but I don't think it's very good at all. Like, it's a limited speed boost for her teammates, um, and it's not even close to like what Nas can do with her super. Obviously, a star power shouldn't be as strong as a super, but you guys get the idea. It's not very good. Now, based off of my limited time playing Gale, I think that he could absolutely benefit from an attack damage buff and possibly some sort of a nerf to his gadget. But other than that, 
he feels pretty solid in 3v3 modes once he is maxed out. He's pretty terrible before you get that gadget, and he is very not good in Solo Showdown. Okay, guys, now it's time for a rapid round fire of opinions, and then I'm going to rate this Brawl Stars update as a whole. I like the new chromatic rarity, but it's a bummer that there's not a triumphant fanfare that happens when you get them unlocked. I think it's really cool that Brawl Stars figured out a way to give the Brawl Pass new brawlers without flooding them in the game with a super rare brawler that's difficult to unlock. I also really like the new improvements to Hot Zone a lot. I find it really refreshing, and I hope that you guys are playing the mode a lot more than other modes because I really want it to be a permanent one, right? Now, my only gripe with it is that it's currently not super clear that you can no longer progress after you've raised one of the flags on one zone, which leads to people fighting over a zone that's useless for them to fight over and they should just move to the second zone. However, on maps with only one zone, I think it's really great. I also love the changes to the ticketed events, meaning that there is no longer a need to grind them for hours so you can burn through tickets. And people will get more rewards on the weekends, which I think is just perfect. Now, I do think that big game is very likely going to need some massive changes, but I do think that having one big brawler on a showdown size map sounds like a lot of fun, and I think they're headed in the right direction. I also think that Robo Rumble is going to be a bit too hard for most free-to-play players who do not have maxed out accounts and do not have friends to play with consistently. It took OJ, Lex, and I three tries to beat Insane 1, and we even had to use an exploit to beat Insane 2, and I think that's going to make it very difficult and frustrating for people to complete their quests. I wanted to say that I'm okay with gems being removed from brawl boxes and being put into the free pass. With all the drop rates considered, free to play players are getting very close to the same number of gems per season than they were before the update. And when I say very close, I mean like within one gem, which is very impressive. However, gemmers are getting fewer free gems, which I find disappointing. Someone suggested on my community page that Supercell should allow for some free gems to drop from the big boxes at the end of the free pass, which would make it better for everyone because free to play players are going to reach that point more and they're going to get more free big boxes at the end of the season and free to play players are going to have a little bit more of a chance to get some more as well. I think that's a pretty great solution. I am very bummed that the value of token doublers has decreased because of the way that the Brawl Pass has impacted them. Their value got a 34% nerf. So I think that their gem cost should be nerfed as well. 1,000 token doublers for 33 gems would make them provide the same amount of value as before, but I would be happy even if 1,000 token doublers cost 35 or 40 gems. I mean, light and medium spenders already got a massive buff, so I guess I'm okay with the change, but overall, I think that the token doublers should provide more value. I think that the new environment is incredibly well made, and it fits the theme with Brawl Stars so well. It is so amazing. I wish that I had more time to talk about it in this video. I think that Daryl's voice is kind of weird and a bit too high pitched. I do like it when he sings, they see me rolling. I think that's funny. But other than that, his, his, his voice is a little, uh, I don't know, it, it doesn't quite fit if you ask me. I do love Pam's remodel though, and I am a huge fan of Rogue Mortis. I think that Tropical Sprout is an awesome value. I love the projectiles that guard Rico shoots, but I think that he kind of looks weird other than that. And I think Trader Gale is super cool, absolutely worth 150 gem, probably worth the cost of the Brawl Pass by itself. And I cannot tell you how much I love Barbarian King Bull. I would be willing to pay 100 150 gems for it and if they made some other changes to it I would probably even be willing to pay 300 gems for it and Supercell gave it to us for free which is just awesome now when it does come to balance changes I honestly have not had enough time to come up with any strong opinions but on paper they do sound like really awesome changes I think that's going to need some more tweaks and stuff like that but that's just you know that's balance changes to give and take and those are my thoughts on everything in this update but what about this update as a whole as I said earlier I'm going to rate this update from zero being the worst update in Brawl Stars history to 10 being the best update in Brawl Stars history I I don't know what you guys think, but I absolutely think that this was the best update in Brawl Stars history with the last update where they added gadgets as a close second. I have got to give this update a 10 out of 10 for so many reasons. Brawl Stars is continuing to release unique and interesting brawlers. The skins that they are releasing are getting better and better and providing more value for your gems. And they are continuing to release a ton of new content without it getting stale or boring. And it's obvious that they are listening to the player base and are making very calculated and smart decisions that positively impact the majority of their players. Back earlier this year when Frank said that 2020 was going to be huge for Brawl Stars, I honestly didn't think it was going to be as good as this. Like, I thought it was going to be better, but I thought he was, you know, he's a very honest guy. He, he's Frank, that's right. It's, it's his name, but it's he's also a Frank person. But I kind of thought he was just, like, hyping things up a little bit. But no, it has been fantastic, and I cannot wait to see what the rest of this year brings for Brawl Stars. Obviously, I don't think that this update was perfect. I've already talked about some things that I feel like Supercell could have done to improve things, but... 
This is the best update in Brawl Stars history, if you ask me. And that is my 100% honest review of this update, guys. Let me know what you thought about this update and rank it from zero to, or one being the worst, to 10 being the best. And feel free to let me know if you disagree with my opinions or if you think that there's something that I missed. Thanks for watching, guys. Use code Kairos in the Brawl Stars shop. And for now, this is Kairos time ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.